welcome to Grace Life Church Podcast. If you would like any more information about us, please visit our website, gracelife.com.au. Garfield is um, a great... Uh, Garfield and his wife Sue add so much value to this house. They're based in Ellenbrook and Garfield's a clinical psychologist and he, uh, along with his wife, helped f- found Alter One. And it's good to see, for quality control, we have Peter Havel here today. <laughs> Peter Havel is another co-founder for Alter One. Just making sure Garfield doesn't tell any fibs today, I imagine. <laughs> hey, can we do something? Can we stand up and uh, just welcome Garfield as he comes to share this morning? Well, good morning. (laughs) I'm going to do something I really shouldn't do. (laughs) That's a good way to start, isn't it? (laughs) Um, And I want you to hold your tomatoes uh, until after I do this, okay? So don't throw them now. But um, yeah, I do want to honor uh, some people here. Um, And a lot has to do with why Sue and I uh, have chosen to come to this church. A lot of it has to do with what the church here in this community, but also in uh, Livingston. You know, the, 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 <clears throat> the, um, the work that the pastors are doing there under the leadership of Josh, uh, that is why we come here. Uh, what, what this church is doing, not only in this community, but also uh, in, in Livingston and other places, I think in India and so on. Also, what it does to all to one, the heart that this church has for all to one. Um, and as Josh has already said there, you know, uh, I just I honor Sue. Uh, you know, when you start something like that, it's very much like a church, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. A lot of challenges. But you know, through God, through God, all things are possible. So this morning, I feel, first, I want to say again, I feel very humble to be able to come here and um, to deliver, deliver his word. Not my word, but his word. So um, what I'd like to do first is, uh, uh, oh, I can't see them. Okay, all right. Uh, I wasn't quite sure if I could actually see the, um, uh, the screens, uh, but I, I can, I can actually, actually see them. So what I'd like to start out by doing is just reading some scripture. And if, if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn to Hebrews chapter 10, and we're going to read from verses 19 to 25 as we start. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 to 25, the NIV. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most high place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain, that is the body, And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Verse 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur on one another love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some have in the, in, as some ha- are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day coming. Not giving up the meeting together not giving up the meeting together, not forsaken coming together like we are, 
not forsaking coming to the different things that the church uh, involved in during the week. Don't stop doing that. Don't stop doing that. Let's just pray. Father, just a simple prayer this morning in Jesus' name. When I was actually growing up, I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. And I remember in the wintertime, uh, we, we, we had stoves, and those stoves were fueled by coal. And the coal would, would, it would be a big chunk. And my grandmother putting the coal into the potbelly stove, because in the U.S. it gets very cold. It gets like 40 below zero. And so she would stoke that stove up, and she would have it going. And then sometimes she would have to take the, um, uh, sort of take some of the ashes out so that she could actually um, uh, put more coal to keep it fired up because it was so cold. And what would happen as the coal of the stove and put on the side, what do you think it would do? It would just, eventually it would glow down and then become cold. It would become cold. Did you know that that is what happens when we forsake the coming together of God's people? That is what happens. What will happen is that as away from one another, the body of Christ, what will happen is that the glow will start to just calmly disappear and we can become cold. The Bible says do not forsake coming together. Do not forsake coming to the life groups. Life groups. Because there's a risk of running and becoming cold. I'm going to talk about five things this morning that we benefit from coming to the church. And the first thing is that when you come to the church, you come to a place where there's a sense of a belonging, a sense of belonging. I remember when Sue and I went to the U.S., um, my family goes to a church, and it's an old, and um, we, we had a few Sundays there, and so we went to church. And as soon as we walked in that door, these are people I have never met before, there was a sense. They had us standing up, Sue stood up. She's the only white person in that all black church. <laughs> but there was a sense of belonging. There was a sense of belonging. Halfway around the building with all those beautiful people, and there was a sense of belonging. That's what church has to offer. When we come together, there's a sense of belonging. You know, there are many, many Advantages for coming to church. I'm just going to read a couple here. In the book of John, you don't have to turn to that. You can just relax and listen. Uh, John chapter 17, verse 11. I will remain in the world no longer. This is Jesus. But they are still in the world. That's you and I. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name. The name you give so they be as one as we are one. Protect. Now, you know, sometimes I can't talk about stuff, but you know, we need protection. We need protection. Some years back, I used to be called the local exorcist. <laughs> and uh, in the church, a uh, different church would call me to come and and, and deal with people who had been in the alcult. Uh, Peter would remember some of those days. And, um, and what I realized through the years that I did that sort of ministry, oh boy, we need protection. See, when you come together and you have a sense of belonging in the church, you are, you, 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 you are, you're going to be protected. 
You're going to be protected because you and I, as God's people, as we are in his army, as we are in in an army where God is building his church, and the Bible says that he is going to build his church and the gates of hell are not going to stand against it, we need protection. We need protection because the enemy will you. He will make an assignment. He will make an assignment to this, uh, against this church. He will make an assignment against Josh. He will make an assignment against me. We need protection. So as we come to a church, a group of people, don't forsake that. Don't forsake that. Because we need protection. Father, you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation, the creation. He loved you and me before we even existed. Man, how do you get your head around that? Before you existed, before I existed, my goodness, he loves us so much. Thank the Lord, the cross is empty. Because he wants us to be where he is. And where is he? He's at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and for me. Wanting to meet every need that we have. He wants to be the Father. He wants to be our Father. He wants to be our Daddy. Oh my goodness, what a wonderful father. And together. You know, there's a strong message. My life had been intersecting with many different people for many years. And you know, what, ten, what begins to happen is that people can lose heart. Now, you won't hear about this in the news. You won't read about it in the newspaper. But you see, we that really wants to destroy you. In the book of John, it says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I've come to give you life and give it to the fullest. And so the people that I intersect with, there's a message. And I tell you, I have met many people, and the message is very close. The Lord can, can, can keep you from gathering together, coming together. It gives the enemy a chance to mess with your mind. And as he messes with your mind, he's got one message. He wants to destroy you. He wants to kill you. And eventually what will happen, he will drive you to a place that you'll start to hear this. You'll start to hear people off if you weren't around. Your husband would be better off if you weren't around. Your wife would be better off if you weren't around. Your parents would be better off if you weren't around. If we forsake forsake coming together, As God's people, we run the risk of going cold, the risk of falling and hearing a lie because he is the father of lies. He wants to separate us. Don't forsake the coming together of God's people. The second thing that we benefit by coming to church is healing. In John chapter 5, and we'll start with verse 1. And this is what Jesus, uh, going to the, uh, the Jewish festival, as he uh, was accustomed to doing. Sometimes later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now they're in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate. Uh, uh, sorry, now there, there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate which is Aramaic, is called and Bethesda means the house of mercy. And which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. 
One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been there, he had, he had been in this condition, he asked him, Do you want to be healed? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. Where I am trying to get, someone else get, goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And at once, he picked up his mat, and he walked. And some ask, well, you know, what about the rest? He, he healed one person. You see, Jesus did not want to be known as just as a miracle worker. He wanted to be known as the Savior. The Savior. You see, in Vietnam, <clears throat> I spent two tours in a, in a very messy place. And when I was in Vietnam, I learned that our bodies were not meant to go to war like we have now. All the soldiers that are in wars were not meant to experience that kind of experience. What I'm aware of now, because I've done so many studies to try to figure out why do people have post-traumatic stress disorder, it is simply because God did not design us to experience those kind of experiences. He didn't design us for that. And so what happens when we experience something that we weren't designed for, it begins to mess with the way that we were created. We're created in the image of God. But you see, when we are in this sinful world, we have to have wars, like you know about that's happening all over this planet. There's so many wars. There's so much conflict. We weren't designed for that. And so in this particular case, for me, I came out with post-traumatic stress disorder. They wanted to do it. They didn't quite understand it at that time. So the first thing they wanted to do is, okay, you're going to have to go on medication. And the medication was at that time was Valium. Now, Valium just kind of, you know, uh, not, um, we need medication at this day and age. I'm telling you, we need medication. Because without the medication, we don't cope with life very well. But in this particular case, I needed medication just to function because I didn't know how to treat post-traumatic stress disorder. Because what I learned later, what it does to the brain is that you, we have in our brain, you have it, I have it, it's called the amygdala. And the amygdala continues to swell. When you're under threat and I'm under threat, the, the amygdala begins to swell. So I used to hear a siren, whether it was a school siren going off, or whether it was a police car going by, I would want to hit the deck. Because my amygdala was swelling, and it was telling me, you're under threat. It was still thinking that I'm back there. And so I needed a tablet to try to help me cope with life for, uh, when any, anything would trigger me back to there. My hippocampus, it didn't function well because the hippocampus actually helps you to uh, and send it to the rest of the brain so you can think clearly. Well, that was just two things all messed up. And I had to have the medication. When I met God, when I met God, I came off the medication. I shouldn't be able to get up here and talk to you like this, having those notes there, and be able to just talk to you. I if a siren goes by there, by, by the roadside out there, I should hit the floor because my amygdala is still swelling, but it's not. When I met God, I don't have post-traumatic stress disorder anymore. I don't have it. I can go... 
give glory to God. I can go to a veteran of foreign wars and every soldier there who has been in uh, still is plagued with post-traumatic stress disorder. And I can tell them, no, I don't have that anymore. God healed me. You see, this man who was at the pool of Bethsaida, he was asking Jesus, help me to the pool. Help me get there. If I could just get to the pool, I would be healed. But he didn't realize. And the healer said, get up, take up your mat and walk. And the man took up his mat and he walked. You see, sometimes we want to go to things, I want to go to things that I think is going to be the best for me. So I will say, I guess, help me get there. If I can just get to this place, if I can have this, if I can do that, I will be better off. But if I can meet the, 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 the Jesus that the Jesus that has, has the ability to meet every single thing I need, then there is no way I need to do this. I need to climb this ladder. There's no way I need this much money. There's no way I need to do the, to, to do the things that I think is going to be better off for me. Because I have met the one, the healer. When you belong to God, you belong to his family, you belong to each other, you have a place to belong. You have the capacity to be healed. And at Allenbrook, we are he hearing people being healed. They're giving testimonies here. I am telling you, I, I, what is God doing? God is up to something. He is healing. He is healing. The third thing, when we come to church, is that we get restored. God is in the business of restoring. In Psalm chapter 14, verses, uh, uh, verse, sorry, 147, verse 3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. In Jeremiah 30, verse 17, restore you to health and heal your wounds. You know, the church is like a hospital. <laughs> we come in here, we're going to get healed. We're going to get restored. When I go back to the U.S., my brothers are into cars, the old cars. Sue and I would have been up there on a little farm, a little paddock, 38 Chevys and 48 Fords, <laughs> 1948 Fords, 1938 Chevys. They're all out there in the paddock. And then in one of my brother's garages, they got these stingrays, <clears throat> these um, Corvettes, and they've been restored. Where we live, there's a guy that drives a, I think it's a, like a 38 Ford, but he's got it all painted up. And it just when, when he drives by, people just look at it. But it's 19. You see, when we come into the church, we've been all battered and bruised, like those old cars out there in the paddock. And like my brothers, they took those cars into the, the garage and they just love it. They polish, they gotta cut out all the rust. It polishes them up, paints them up, and they just look great. Well, that's what God does to us. That's what he did to me. After being all beaten and battered up, I come into the midst of God's people I get restored. I re I'm, I'm, I'm put back together the way God intended me to be. You get put back together the way God intended you to be. You know, what a great healer. What a great restorer. And then these lies that tells us to try to separate us from God's people so we miss out on that. The third thing. Identity. Identity. Sorry, fourth thing. See, see, that's my amygdala. That's my hippocampus. <laughs> it slips up every now and then. <laughs> that's right. We are this number four. Number four. Identity. 
You know, there's a lot of people, 50s, 60s, they don't know who they are. They do not know who they are. And if we forsake the coming together of God's people and we're separated, we can lose who we are. We can lose our identity in Jesus. You see, God wants us to identify with Jesus, our identity to be in Jesus. He wants us to be Christ-like. Romans chapter 1, verse uh, uh, 18 to 20, verses 18 to 20. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against the wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness since they may be known about God and pla is plain to them. Because, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from whom has been put from, so that people are without excuse. When I first got to Vietnam, this was my first day, and there were two guys, they were celebrating because they had one day to go. They had one day to go. And so I had just arrived and uh, uh, sleep on the ground because if you get attacked uh, and, and the bomb comes, you're gonna get, you're gonna, you're gonna get shrapnel. So I just, that night I said, oh, the first night I can't sleep on the ground. I have to sleep in a hooch. And so I went to sleep in the hooch. And I went to sleep thinking about those guys who were celebrating. They had one day to go. And I had a whole year. Oh, my. I was so wishing and hoping I was those guys. So that night I went to sleep. And we got attacked. And those two young guys lost their lives. I have trouble with this all the time when I think back. Because I praise God. That there goes me by the grace of God. It wasn't me. So these two guys lost their life. And that night, I, 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 I could go into it, but I, there's so many things that I could speak about as to how God saved me, protected me. But those guys lost their life. And I had stress. I, it hit me. And what they say, I was gone for about a month. Uh, sorry, yeah, it was about a month. When you get stressed, you go into some kind of trauma. You don't function. You just kind of, and I was just drifting along because I was, uh, it had hit me, the trauma of it. And I was just, just day to day, um, just going about, just, just drifting. And then one night, I remember to this day, I was, um, it was on guard duty, and I came off guard duty. And I remember having my rifle across my chest, and I remember looking up at the stars. And it was as though I came to my senses. I was not a Christian. I came to my senses. And all of a sudden, I wanted to know, how did all that get up there? Who made that? And I was also thinking about those guys had one day, and I'm here for 365. But later I learned after I was away from all that, I am in the same boat. It could happen tomorrow. I could get in a car, drive out of here, go around the corner, and my life could end. I came to my senses. I came to my senses, and I said, all I want to do is follow God. I stopped suppressing the truth. I stopped, I didn't want to argue with my brothers anymore because they used to tell me about Christ and there was something in me that said, no, just argue with them. And the truth down. But that night when I looked up, I was without excuse. I came to my senses. 
And I started looking for God. I wanted to identify with him. So what God does gives us a place to belong. And then he heals us. He'll put us back together after we've been battered and bruised. And then he will give us an identity in Jesus. In Jesus. Last thing. Jeremiah, the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet of the nations, a sovereign Lord, I said. I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. But the Lord said to me, do, don't, uh, uh, do not say, I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid, don't, do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. The Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. The purpose. You have a purpose in God. I have a purpose in God. You have a reason that you're on this planet. I have a reason. When we come to church, we discover our purpose in God. In the book of Jeremiah, God says, I know the plans I have for you. Not to harm you, but for good. To give you a hope and a future. Father, we are so thankful that you love us. We will never get our heads around the fact that how you could actually send your son, your only son, Father, to go and hang on a cross and be crucified. We will never understand. We'll never understand it. We thank you so much, Lord, for the purpose for the church, the, the reason we have a church, the body of Christ. We thank you, Lord, it gives us a place to belong. It gives, a place, gives us a place to be healed, Lord, to have an identity in Christ, to have a purpose in God. We will never understand it. We'll never get our heads around it on this side of heaven. You're a good, good father. You are a good, good father. And Lord, this morning, we pray that we will not, we will come to our senses and that you will be able to do the things in our lives that you want to do. For I know the plans I have for you, not to harm you, but for good, for your hope and a future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We hope you've enjoyed listening to this podcast from Grace Life Church. For more information about us or any of our services, please visit our website at gracelife.com.au.